Hey guys, here today showing you how to replace the valve cover gaskets on a 2002 Nissan Maxima. Uh, this has the VQ35 engine. This is the first year of this engine. Um, although this is a fifth generation Maxima, uh, the year before this had the VQ30 engine, which is a three liter engine, and it would have had a different type of intake manifold it wouldn't have had this cover on it so there is a difference between the two this honestly this should apply from 2002 on up through I don't know I believe 2010 when they stopped making these uh, VQ 3.5 liters I think they may have went to the 3.7 liter but regardless this engine is in the Maxima this engines in I believe the uh, Nissan Quest uh, G35s, obviously with G35s are going to be turned to the side, um, but this is a Maxima and uh, the front one's not too hard to get at. It's the back one that's more difficult because it does require removing the upper intake plenum and uh, there's just a lot of various connectors and whatnot. So um, you need a good set of hand tools. You also need a five millimeter Allen socket to take this cover off. Um, so this is my first time doing it on this car so just bear with me as i might take off stuff that probably didn't need to be taken off but i try to not you know i try to keep everything as intact as i can and just pull everything off as a whole so um first off we just need to get rid of this uh cover engine cover and i'm actually going to focus on doing the back getting to the back uh cylinder head first because obviously the front one is easy so We'll go ahead and remove this cover. There's four five millimeter Allen screws. Once those are off, go ahead and just lift this cover up and just set it down out the way. So now we can clearly see the front valve cover is easy to get to. This guy here is not too bad to get at, but we're going to focus on getting the back one off first. So what I'm actually going to do is to remove this intake assembly here. Uh, I'm going to try to leave the box in place, but I'm going to try to remove this here resonator out of here. Uh, it's held on by just a few hose clamps. Um, down on the side there is a uh, you can use a eight millimeter or a fill or flathead uh, screwdriver to loosen up the clamp here um, you'll also need to remove this here breather hose which is just a you know pair of hose clamps remove both of them remove that there is a 10 millimeter right here that is bolted down and uh, that should be it so we'll go on ahead and try and get this off and then we'll go from there because a lot of these hoses might actually be very brittle. Got that guy there off. So we're gonna have to actually remove this air box out of the way. It is held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. Um, there's one right here, one here, one right here, and then there's one straight down right here where this indentation is, straight down right there. So if you've already loosened up this clamp right here uh, go on ahead and remove this uh, connector for the uh, mass airflow sensor and just set that to the side then go on ahead and remove these various uh, screws here it is also attached to this here box but you should be able to lift it up out of the way um, so that we can uh, take that box out You will need a long extension to get that bottom one down there. Okay, so this whole assembly, like I said, should just lift up like this. Go ahead and, and just detach it from this here guy. 
then this guy you can actually just slip off as well and now you have everything off. Um, try to keep all your bolts and everything together if you can. What I like to do actually is just go on ahead and screw the bolts right back into where they were at. That way I know where they went at and I will never forget it. Excuse me, it's very windy, I apologize. Okay, so now that we're on this side of the car already, um, we'll go on ahead and just take off some of the uh, electrical connectors that are here that I know will be in the way. Um, like I said, I try to keep everything as intact as possible, but some stuff just cannot be avoided. So we're gonna go on ahead and this here wiring harness right here, just let this disconnect that guy. You want to end disconnect the mass airflow, or excuse me, the throttle position sensor. Like so. You can go on ahead and actually use a 10 millimeter to loosen up this here bracket so that way you don't have to disconnect this wiring harness right here you just take this all and just let it hang in the front here do you just put this bolt back in here so you know where it goes now all of this is going to be coming off as a whole the only thing that's not going to come off that you can probably detach is this evap hose so use hose clamps right here to take this one hose off because this is actually attached to the body of the car so you'll just tuck this guy up out of the way somewhere for now and you can just leave that there um, there are okay now that we got the evap hose off this connectors off um, there are coolant lines that run into the throttle body um, well they don't really run into the throttle body actually just below it so when we do go, go to take off the intake manifold, we will have to kind of just swing it this way and prop it up so that way we don't have to worry about taking off the coolant lines and re-bleeding the coolant and having coolant splashing all over the place. So uh, we should be good on this side for now. We're going to go on ahead and uh, move to the you know main part of the car over here and also on that side because that's where most all of the uh, connectors are and, and, and whatnot. I would like to point out right now, I guess, since you're on this side of the car, on the very back of the intake manifold, if you reach right down, right directly down right here, there are two 12 millimeter bolts that need to come out. Um, I suggest just doing them now since they are already on this side. And you should be able to just get at them with a regular ratchet and a 12 millimeter, uh, a 12 millimeter um, socket. There will be a heater hose in the way but uh, you should be able to just maneuver around it. And so we got both those out, no problem. Also on the back of the motor, there is the brake booster hose that goes along the back and it gets attached right to the back. You can go on ahead and disconnect that hose and take it off. There are also two connectors right here in the back, a green one and a blue one. You can go on ahead and disconnect those and take them off as well. Connectors undone. Brake booster hose here undone. There's also there's also one more vacuum hose that's right here on the back of the intake that goes down as a breather for the valve cover. Uh, disconnect it from the intake manifold and pull it off. You can leave it attached to the valve cover for now. Just a very short hose. Okay, so now we can go on ahead and uh, focus on trying to remove uh, the intake manifold plenum here. Um, there are a few vacuum hoses that go attached to it here in the front. You can just leave these attached. Um, they are not going to get in our way. What do right here is disconnect this one electrical connector right here in the front. And then um, we should be able to leave everything else exactly how it is. Um, yeah, we should be able to just leave everything ex 
exactly how we see it. Uh, this is, actually I lied. We will need to remove this here uh, canister. So there are two vacuum uh, nipples here. Do remember which one goes where. Take a picture of it if you need to. That way you don't forget it. A 12 millimeter bolt to remove this bracket off. So I'm going to take a picture so I don't forget where it goes. Then we'll go ahead and use a uh, 12 millimeter to remove this here. Loosen that guy up. And you can go on ahead and put the bolt right back down here. I'm not even going to disconnect the uh, vacuum hose. I'm just going to leave them like that because they're pretty old and brittle. I don't want to mess with them really more than I have to. Um, you'll also need a 10 millimeter to remove this here guy out the way. Go ahead and also just set him down to the side. We're just moving these so we have access to these bolts to uh, loosen this guy up. Okay, now these are all 12 millimeter. They're one, two, three, four, five in total. Um, we'll go on ahead and break those all loose. And then the manifold at that point should be free to where you can lift it up and, and kind of swing it up over to the right. Um, don't be so uh, harsh with it. As you remember, it's still connected to the coolant lines there. And um, we also have, will still have this attached and these are pretty old vacuum lines. I mean, obviously you can buy new vacuum lines if they break, but why break it if you can just try to be gentle. What's up? Another one. No, a different one. off. I'm going to set these in the back also so I know where they go. Got all those off. The uh, intake manifold should be fairly loose as you can tell. We're going to go ahead and lift it up and swing it up out of the way. There is a vacuum hose over here that you're going to have to uh, pay attention to to try and get it around. It's very hard and brittle but uh, you should be able to get it to come up around that. this back if you remember the two the red and blue or excuse me the blue and green connectors there in the back there is a wiring harness that it's still attached to back here um, there's a 10 millimeter nut that's holding the bracket on uh, you can try to go out ahead and get those alternatively if you look straight down on the side of the clip there's a little tab that you can press to release these um, from the um, to release them from the uh, bracket but I'm, I'm just going to use a 10 millimeter I think and uh, just release the bracket entirely okay that's loose now so you can just go on ahead and swing this up up to the side here like this um, you can honestly try and find some way to uh, you can just let it pretty much just sit just like that is perfectly fine and now we can focus on getting the uh, back valve cover off so let me move you ahead to the other side okay this is the little bracket that I was talking about on the back that was still attached to the uh, manifold um, now we're gonna go on ahead and uh, just move whatever move whatever um, wiring harnesses that we need to move out of the way uh, we can go on ahead and disconnect all the coil packs. They pretty much are just tabs, you press them. Now keep in mind, they're probably probably pretty old. So do try to be as gentle as you can with them so that they do not break. 
So there we go, that's all three coil packs released. Now we can go on ahead and remove the coil packs. They're held, on, held down by 10 millimeter bolts. There's three of them here. All these will just pull straight up and out. Might have to wiggle them a little bit, but they should just come straight out like so. Do you right now you want to inspect to see if there's any oil on these boots and down in the spark plug holes. If there is, um, unfortunately, Nissan again decided to not make the spark plug grommets serviceable. Pretty much there's a seal that goes around each of these spark plug holes to stop oil from going in there. Um, people have cut them open and kind of you know rig something up to, to work but really you're supposed to actually replace the entire valve cover from Nissan just go, or not really from Nissan but anyone um, since you can't service them. So right now if you do have oil on them unfortunately you're going to want to get new valve covers because you cannot service the, uh, the tube seals. So yeah that's just a side note. Um, just set all these down on the side. Um, it doesn't matter which cylinder you pull these off of as long as they go back. All right, it doesn't like matter if you misplace one or whatever. They're all the same coil pack, so just set them down. These all look to be pretty dry, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to go on ahead and put the bolts back into the... Uh, holes where they came from for the coil packs. This wiring harness right here that's for the fuel injectors you're going to have to, you're going to, have, to have to uh, remove them. Remove them from this here. We'll do that with a set of pliers. Just grab the back of the wiring harness and pinch them and push it out. Just like so. So that now everything there is free. There is a really hard plastic piece right here that runs between both valve covers. Um, I, I believe if you can get it off, you can try to uh, honestly probably just replace it with a new piece of rubber hose that goes between the two because these are very brittle. This one I can see, already see has a crack in it. And so I'm gonna try my best to try and take this off. It, it may actually break. But um, when I do go to remove this valve cover, I'm going to try my best to, to pull this uh, here hose off so that way I can try to retain it and, and, and use it again if, if I need it. So the valve cover is held on by 10 millimeter bolts all the way around the outside. Uh, one, two, three, four, five right here in the middle. And then there are six, seven, eight nine in the very back so you will need to remove all of these in order to get the valve cover off i'll have to use a uh a ratchet for the back ones a ratchet and an extension the side one right here you're probably going to have to use a um a wrench to get it off like a box and wrench like this should be should note that you should put a rag or something right here so that way you don't get a bolt that falls into that. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't notice that until right now. Not very smart of me at all. Someone will probably call me out on it. As well they should. So there are 10 in total. You can see 
see we got this guy here loose. Uh, there's one small wiring harness over here, connector that's in the way that you need to uh, remove. Just like so. Should be able to lift this guy up and slide it out just like that. As I said, you're going to have to be careful with this here hose. Try your best to, to reuse it if you can. If not, and it breaks, that's completely okay because you can just buy a new small rubber hose to replace that one. Okay, and we got that guy off. And uh, this is the valve cover right here, or the valve cover gasket. You can go ahead and just pull it out and throw it away. Okay, you will you will want to take a rag and wipe wipe around all the perimeter over here to make sure you get all the dirt off. Same with this. You want to try your best to clean it up. Um, get all some of this old uh, old silicone off of here uh, before you go ahead and stick it back on. Okay, so now that you got the cylinder head wiped clean in the back, I would suggest getting black silicone and put a small bead along the, the downside or the far side of the motor because that's the part that tends to leak the most uh, because all the oil is tends to rest there. Also along up on the side over here, I would run a small little bead. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge bead of silicone, just a little bit to ensure you get a good seal. Same goes for when you're installing the new valve cover gasket. I would try to run, um, not run a bead necessarily, but you can just put a, uh, a little bit of silicone into uh, each small little straight part right here. That way that holds the uh, gasket into place. So that way when you go to install it, it doesn't move out of the way. It doesn't come out on you. I'll go ahead and install the new gasket into place. Make sure you get it fully seated into the valve cover. As you can see, I got the wrong valve cover gasket. Let me get the other one. Yeah, I got that all in place. I'm going to go ahead and run a small bead of silicone in the back. Just like so. Now you can go on ahead and reinstall the valve cover back into place. Uh, remember you have to get this uh, breather hose back connected at the same time. So I'm going ahead and do that now. Make sure that all the there's no wiring harnesses or anything like that in the way. You will feel a little bit of resistance because the spark plug tube seals need to go needed to get seated around the spark plug holes. use a small flathead screwdriver or any flathead screwdriver to help you see, get the uh, spark plug tube seals to seat around the circles. Then you go ahead and grab the screws and just start to tighten them by hand. As you do this, um, it'll start to gradually pull the uh, valve cover into the correct location. Now Nissan requires you to make two passes as far as tightening these up to a certain torque. You will need an inch pound torque wrench. Of course you could just go away with tightening them as snug as you can uh, by hand, but these are small bolts and it's aluminum. So if you can get a hand, your hands on a torque wrench that would be best. 
If you can't, just tighten them up to where they're just snug, almost like a spark plug. Do not go too crazy, otherwise you will strip them. Um, unfortunately, Nissan gives a pretty broad range of what the torque needs to be. First pass, you can torque it between 61 to 78 inch pounds. Um, I get that you would probably need to make two passes because uh, the bolts will need to center themselves in the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with uh, 60 inch pounds from the start. And then on my second pass, I'm gonna go on ahead and tighten them to probably 75 inch pounds if I can get it. If I can't get 75, if I feel it's gonna strip, then I'm not going to. I'm probably gonna go to 70 or 72. So uh, do, do keep that in mind. Okay, so I got the uh, valve cover on. I already went through the first initial torque se sequence of 60 inch pounds. Um, I'm gonna go on ahead and go straight up to 75 inch pounds and I'm gonna leave it at that. The only one I'm not going to be able to get real proper torque on is this one right here because it's underneath this and I can't really get the socket on there correctly. So I'm going to go in and just tighten it to what I feel is about correct. Okay, we'll leave it just like that. Okay, now you can go on ahead and reinstall the uh, coil packs. You can go on ahead and put this uh, wiring harness back into where it was at. Coil packs, just take them, remember, just slide them straight down until they slide into place. And you can stick the bolt back in. like so. You can reattach the uh, wiring harness over here on the side as well. And then we will actually just leave this just like this. We can go on ahead and focus on getting the front part off now. Uh, let me just get some stuff out of the way here. We can focus on taking the front off. Okay, so I got little things re rearranged here. As you can see, I just set the uh, I just set the intake, uh, upper intake manifold down right there just for now. Uh, I'm not going to install it until I'm done with the other, with the front valve cover gasket. So this is pretty much exactly like the uh, backside. The only difference really you're going to have to deal with is uh, the O2 sensor connectors here. You'll need to disconnect all of these and just flip them up. And then you also have to disconnect this large wiring harness from the valve cover you can do that just by squeezing the tabs here like so and pulling that guy out like this same for this one just squeeze these it's a bit brittle but it should come out but yeah they'll, they'll come out just like so um, we can we can uh, aid that by loosening this guy right here I'll loosen, loosen that wiring harness a little bit and um, We'll just set this here to the side. As these, these right here, this is extremely hard and, and really brittle to, to uh, try and mess with. So just try your best to kind of move it out of the way, just enough to, to get it loose. Uh, I'm gonna go on ahead and loosen up these here grounds as well. Probably not necessary, but if it helps the uh, wiring harness move a little bit easier, then I'm gonna do that. Okay, so now we're gonna go on ahead and disconnect all of these um, O2 sensor connectors. I am going to, you, you just pinch them and pull them up. I find that using a pair of long needle nose pliers like this helps, helps me pinch it a little bit easier so I can just lift them straight off. But however you wanna do it, however it works for you. last 
wiring harness is attached to a little plastic connector like this. However, it's easier to just loosen up the 10 millimeter bolt that's down at the bottom and uh, I'm going ahead and pull that guy out. I'm gonna get my magnet. Okay, so now these are all loose, like so. Go on ahead and disconnect all of the coil pack connectors. Like so. Uh, there's one more brown connector that's at the bottom here. Uh, I'm not sure what it's for, but you can go on ahead. It's straight down right here. You go on ahead and just uh, disconnect that one as well. And you can go on ahead and kind of just gent gently swing this up out of the way. Um, you might be able to use this to kind of hold it there in place. Just somewhat up out of the way as best you can. It will be kind of hard to deal with it because all of this stuff is really old and fragile. But now we're going to go ahead and remove the three coil packs. Remember, just twist them a little bit and pull them straight out. Inspect for any oil. This is clean. Also clean. And this one does have a little bit of oil on it. It's not too bad though, so um, looks like we'll be good. I did actually just spill some oil over here, so that might have been that. Okay, so pretty much it's the same as the back um, side. I'm gonna pull the dipstick out. You'll pretty much just need to put all the coil pack bolts back in. You'll pretty much just need to uh, loosen up all the uh, perimeter bolts. There's one, two, three. There should be ten like the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, there's ten. And uh, you might actually need to remove the oil cap to get to this one right here. I don't know. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I went on ahead and loosened that, so I'm going ahead and loosen all these up and remove them all. Okay, now those are all loosened up. Same as the back. Take a flathead screwdriver and try to, you know, pry up probably on the end over here try and get it started just like so you should be able to lift this now you are going to have to deal with you remember that back the breather hose uh, sorry there's so much stuff in the way with the breather hose that's back here the hard plastic one this one might be a little bit more difficult to, to deal with but you can try your best to um, Try your best to get to get the valve cover out of that hole, and uh, or you can go on ahead and pull it off. You see what I did there? I just pulled the other one off. That way I can leave this one attached. And um, I'm probably just going to get a new hose anyway. But um, yeah, so now that's all off. Go on ahead and clean this up. Remove the old. Remove the old uh, valve cover gasket that is on here. This one looks like it's very well stuck in here. Yeah, this one's really hard and brittle. So yeah, I'll go on ahead and remove that. Make sure you do wipe around the perimeter of the uh, cylinder head. Make sure everything is nice and clean. And I'll get back with you in a minute with installing it. 
Okay, so same as the other one. You want to make sure that you can get a little bit of silicone um, ran in the straight parts so that the gasket can stay in place. Okay, so I got all that ran. I'm going to go ahead and install the new gasket. Now I'm going to go on ahead and run a bead of silicone from the middle of the head, just like I did in the back from the middle, down the whole bottom and up to the middle over here. That way I make sure I get a good seal. Now we can go on ahead and reinstall the valve cover back into place. This one's a little bit more difficult because you have all these wires to deal with, but do your best to try and keep it, keep it all together and keep the um, valve cover gasket in place. Do you remember you have to reattach your uh, vacuum hose as well in, on the back valve cover. Remember it's going to take a little bit of effort to push the valve cover down around the uh, spark plug seals. So just give it gentle pressure. You don't have to really sit on it. Now we can go on ahead and reinstall the, just hand tighten all of the valve cover bolts all 10 of them then I'll do just like the back I'll tighten them to 60 foot pounds first and then I'll go on ahead and follow them up with 75 or excuse me 60 inch pounds first not foot pounds and then I'll follow that up with the second pass at 75 inch pounds okay already went through with one pass at 60 inch pounds I'm gonna go ahead and do the final pass of 75 inch pounds Okay, now that we got those all tightened up, you can go on ahead and reinstall the uh, coil packs back into place. We can go on ahead and reconnect the wiring harness. All the coil packs first. I'm going ahead and push these back into the tab that they were in. Don't forget to put the 10 millimeter back over here off the wiring harness and the two 10s for the ground. There's also the one bracket that's over here on the side that goes down. Then you can go on ahead and reconnect all of the connectors back in the front, all the O2 sensors. Okay, front's all done. Don't forget to get the wiring harness and reconnect the three coil packs in the back here. Don't forget that this right here is the 10 millimeter that will bolt to the back of the intake manifold as you set it down. But we can go on ahead and sit the intake manifold down on top of the motor. Okay, got the intake manifold set back down. Uh, do remember to reinstall the uh, coil pack harness on the back three cylinders um, if you didn't do that already. Also, uh, you'll need to reattach the small bracket that holds the green and uh, blue connectors in the back of the engine. Um, if you remember, there was one 10, 10 millimeter bolt that held it on right here. Uh, while you're back here on this side, you can also reattach the brake booster breather hose, vacuum hose. And you can also reattach the other vacuum hose for the um, valve cover right there in the back. And it was just uh, using a pair of pliers and uh, getting the hose clamps back on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, just like so. So everything there is situated. Um, now, we're going to just set this aside for now. 
So if you remember, there are one, two, three, four, five fasteners here holding the, man, the uh, upper intake plenum on, uh, two nuts, three bolts. Um, these are gonna get torqued to 15 foot pounds. So do make sure you, you set you know, your torque wrench to it. Um, I kind of don't trust my torque wrench, or uh, my foot pound torque wrench to read that low accurately. Um, sometimes I might go a little bit over even though I have it set on 15. Uh, that's just me personally knowing my tool. Uh, of course, I probably should buy another one, but when it gets to anything 15 and below, I don't usually use it. I usually use an inch pound torque wrench. So I'm gonna use my inch pound torque wrench and uh, it really doesn't matter if you wanna use the foot pounds, that's fine, it's 15 foot pounds. I'm gonna use my inch pounds, so you would just multiply 15 by 12 and you would get 180 inch pounds. So that's uh, how you would figure that out. So I'm gonna use my inch pound wrench and it will be 180 inch pounds. Uh, before you do that though, I suggest hand tightening all of these, just start them all by hand, get them all in their, in their places where you know they're all started and they're not gonna strip anything. And then I suggest going to the back of the manifold. You remember where we had those two 12 millimeter bolts? That, um, that act as a brace on the back of the manifold right here. Try to also, you might have to pull this manifold around to get them to line up, but do try to get those lined up as well. In the past, sometimes with, with manifolds like this, if you tighten these all on the top, the back ones may not line up exactly and it's hard to get them in. So if you can just hand tighten everything, um, then you'll know for sure when you tighten these up uh, that the back ones will still be good. So once I get these all hand tightened, I'm gonna go on ahead and torque. Uh, once I get them all hand tightened, I'm gonna go ahead and torque these and then I'll tighten the back up. There we go, now those are all set correctly. Then you can go on ahead and tighten the two bolts in the very back. Okay, yeah, got those tightened on, no problem. Moving back to the front here, we can go on ahead and reinstall the um, vacuum canister here for the power valve and the uh, vacuum power valve solenoid. Uh, one 10 millimeter right here and a 12 millimeter right here. So happen to loosen up any of the uh, vacuum hoses, just go ahead and reattach them now. connect this connector right here as well. Okay, so everything on this side um, should be done now. Now we'll just move back over here to the air box side where we did take off the air box and the intake to in a few various connectors. Okay, now here on this side, we're gonna go on ahead and uh, reattach the air box assembly. A few connectors that we took off as well, we can reconnect. Um, there's the one that sits right here, those plugs in right here, along with the uh, wiring harness connector right there, like so. This will go attach right here to the uh, to the uh, throttle position sensor right here and gets clipped in. This bracket right here goes right here on the top. The 10 millimeter. Just like so. And if you'll remember, we have the EVAP hose that goes, it will need to go under the intake and get reattached right here on this port. Just like that. Go ahead and get the hose clamp back on. Just like that.
and now we can go on ahead and just double check everything. We, do, we will have this one hose here that goes reattached to the air box when we get it back in. Um, just double check everything else, make sure everything is looking good. Everything appears to be uh, back reconnected. We'll put the engine cover on here in a minute. Right now we're going to go ahead and get the air box assembly and put that back together. Um, if you did stick the bolts in for it, go ahead and remove them now before you forget that they're there. I'm going to take the air box assembly and reinstall it now. Um, the only thing you'll have to line up is this here square that goes to this and the throttle body. Uh, press the throttle body on first and everything else should pretty much just fall into place. You may have to lift this up a little bit to get it in there. But um, it should be pretty easy. Everything there is reattached. This guy goes reattached right here to the air box. There's one 10 millimeter bolt that goes right here that connects these two guys together. You can go on ahead and tighten up the eight millimeter or flathead screwdriver clamps. Uh, this one and this one, those are the two that I uh, took apart. And don't forget to run your um, mass airflow sensor connector right here. And that gets plugged in right there and right there. So that's good to go. Then you go on ahead and tighten up all the uh, 10 millimeter bolts and hold those on. Okay, got those all tightened up. Go ahead and tighten up these 8mm clamps. like show make sure everything's tight and okay now we got the intake box everything back on the last thing to put on is the engine cover it just the four or five millimeter bolts you can see where they mount at uh, two go right here two top bolts and the two bottom bolts go right here so I'm just trying to get everything lined up and you can try and start them by hand first at least this front one then all the rest of them should line up pretty easily. Just like so. And that's all there is to it. So yeah, um, if you have any comments or questions about this procedure, uh, just ask them in the comment section below. Uh, if it's your first time on the channel, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. If you guys could hit the like button, that really helps me out a lot as well. I hope that this helped you uh, get these valve covers done like i said it's my first time doing it on this particular engine and i don't think it went so bad actually most front wheel drive v6s are more difficult to work on but i didn't actually mind this one at all seemed to be you know less involved but um yeah if you can hit the subscribe button on your way out and uh, i appreciate it very much i will catch you guys next time